um, the priest didn't do a good job counting and they're breaking the host, it doesn't mean that you get half Jesus this time because the host is broken in half. Or if you're uh, in the hospital and you can't receive very much uh, and the priest just breaks off a host, you've received as much of uh, the body and blood of our Lord as someone who received three. Uh, it's just that that single host makes it easier to distribute. The fourth uh, canon, if anyone says that the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ remains present only in the use while being received by the anathema. So this is another one of Luther's uh, propositions teaching that Christ is really present as the sacrament is being um, administered, but as soon as the uh, ritual is over, it's just back to regular bot, uh, bread and wine, and if you want to, you know, sit around the table and drink it with your meal, that's that's okay. I mean, so it's just back to regular. And he's only present at the time of the administration. So that is a condemned uh, proposition. Uh, the sixth one, if anyone says that in the Holy Sacrament of the Eucharist, Christ, the only begotten Son of God, is not to be adored with worship, even external uh, of latria, that worship, and is consequently neither to be venerated with a special festival, festive solemnity, nor to be solemnly borne about in procession. So here, think of the Feast of Corpus Christi. According to the laudable and universal rite and custom of Holy Church, or is not to be proposed publicly to the people to be adored, so the uh, practice the custom of Eucharistic adoration, and that the adorers thereof are idolaters, let them be anathema. So those who uh, try to squelch Eucharistic adoration tend to run afoul of this canon. Um, uh, it's true then, true now. Uh, seventh one, if anyone says that it is unlawful to reserve the sacred Eucharistic tabernacles or to carry it to the infirmed, let them be anathema. And then uh, the eleventh one, so you can see there's more. I think there were uh, 12 or 13, but I just put a, some of the, uh, I put some of them. If anyone says that, uh, this was a longer one, and for fear less so great a sacrament may be received unworthily, and so unto death and condemnation, so that's taken from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the 11th chapter. This holy synod ordains and declares that sacramental confession, when a confessor may, may be had, so there's a, that condition there, where when a confessor may be had, is of necessity to be made beforehand by those whose conscience is burdened with mortal sin. How trite even they may think themselves. So if it's possible to go beforehand, one is required to go. If it is not possible, uh, then the uh, canon law, so this is current canon law, beneath uh, the, unless there is a grave reason and there's no opportunity to confess, in this case the person is to remember the obligation to make it, to make an act of perfect contrition, which includes the resolution of confessing as soon as possible. So there's still that continuation. Which uh, letter of Paul, what, what reference? That's uh, 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 11. I think it's verse 26. So for some reason, in the lectionary, they don't read that verse. That verse is not read. I don't know why they stop at that verse. They don't read that verse, but it's... If you look at the setting of the lectionary, when it, St. Paul's discussion of the Eucharist, it stops immediately before that verse. Uh, there were a couple topics that uh, the council did not take up. And they did, they, re, they were brought up, they were discussed, but they didn't rule on them because the, uh, the emperor, the, uh, Ferdinand, asked them to withhold judging these things until the Protestants were, Protestants were able to come and make their case to discuss, discuss the matters with respect to the Eucharist. And these were uh, matters concerning uh, communion under both kinds and um, the communication of infants infants receiving Holy Communion. So they had been discussing it. They held back and said, well, give the Protestants an opportunity to come and make their case, and hopefully we can restore unity among, among all Christians. And so um, 
In addition to that, the, the council members decreed that the Protestants from Germany would be guaranteed safe passage. And there was a hope that this would encourage them to come and come to the table, discuss these matters, and hopefully restore unity. But they never came. And they just kept making, first making excuses and then starting to mock the council itself and no interest in uh, going down that road. So moving on from the, uh, camp, the uh, sacrament of the Most Holy Eucharist, they moved to penance. And the sacrament of penance, uh, again, the, the canons giving a definition or boundaries to what was said above in the decree itself. If anyone says that, that the penance is not a sacrament and was not instituted by Christ, for reconciling the faithful to God as often as they sin after baptism, let them be an Adam. So all sacraments must have been instituted by Christ, otherwise it's just an outward ritual or a sacrament, right? Uh, and it is it does not by its very act of being performed communicate grace. The third one says, uh, if anyone says that those words of the Lord the Savior receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you shall forgive, they shall be forgiven, and whose sins you shall retain, they are retained. So this is said to Peter, where after Peter's confession of the divinity of Christ, and it is said at the resurrection appearance in the Gospel of John, when Jesus appears to the uh, disciples in the upper room, are not to be understood of the power of forgiving and of retaining sins in the sacrament of penance, let them be anathema. So after the resurrection, the giving of his spirit, the giving of that gift of peace to the eleven uh, is that gift, that uh, Allah give the power to forgive sins. The fourth uh, canon, if anyone says that for the entire and perfect remission of sins, there are required three acts in the penitent, which are, as it were, uh, there are not. Again, why did I leave off the not? I need to edit my stuff. <laughs> Editor, have any volunteers? <laughs> the matter of the sacrament of penance. So contrition, confession, and satisfaction. This is the um, St. Thomas's way of analyzing, looking at the sacrament of penance. And this is, uh, these are all necessary for a valid confession. If you uh, don't, if you have contrition, if you uh, confess and you do the penance, but you're not sorry, there's no, uh, there's, there's no sacrament there. There has to be the contrition, right? And uh, the uh, the seventh one is if anyone says that in the sacrament of penance, it is not necessary of divine right for the remission of sins to confess all mortal sins by number and kind. So this is something that has uh, been passed down as also the circumstances which change the species of a sin. Or finally, that it is unlawful to confess venial sins, let them be anathema. So one's not required to confess venial sins, but you certainly can. Um, and that is, helps on the way of growing in virtue and in overcoming those that can be sometimes a vice and difficult to give, more difficult to give up than certain mortal sins. Right? And that uh, the circumstances can change the our culpability, right? If we are under threat of death and do something, our free will is seriously impinged. Even if we're doing something that's objectively evil, our free will may be very restricted or not there at all. Uh, so the circumstances can be very important, and the priest is supposed to ask about those things if there's some doubt. Okay. And likewise with the number of, um, the number of times. This, let's say you've been away from confession. You've been away from the practice of the faith for 10 years, and you don't remember exactly how many times you missed Mass. That's not exactly the point. Let's say I missed 50, it's 520. Um, it's the, but it is, uh, the idea comes 